Hey guys, welcome back to Standard Time. In today's video, we're taking a look at the new, well, new for 2020 AP Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph release. The particular watch we're looking at is the blue version. They've got three colors that were released this year. The blue one, the green one, and black and rose gold. However, this is the blue one, and let's get into it. Now, I got to try this piece at Ken's Watches. Massive shout out to Ken's Watches because they're literally letting me get hands-on with these pieces and these are quite exclusive watches this is not a sponsored video or anything I just want to give a shout out where it's due so let's get on with the video let's begin with some of the specifications so the case size is 44 millimeters and it has a thickness of 14.4 millimeters and for a chronograph that thickness is actually not too bad however that 44 millimeter case is rather large but quite expected for such a watch because it's it's really made for that wrist presence this piece so the watch itself apart from the dimensions what what is it really it's it's a chronograph and it's it's obviously automatic it's got the caliber 3126-3840 it's an ap caliber which is essentially a modular chronograph so the chronograph module is attached to the the pre-existing automatic caliber and it runs at 3 hertz, which is 21,600 uh, beats per hour, which is actually not that high. It's uh, relatively common and not something special. I'd have rather prefer to see 4 hertz or even more, maybe maybe 5 plus like Zenith. But yeah, uh, 3 hertz, it's, it's fine. But for such a watch uh, of such an exclusive brand, it is a bit lacking. It's also got a 50 hour power reserve, which is not that great either. But then again, you've got to keep in mind that this watch was not created to showcase some kind of new technical expertise or some new innovation inside the movement half of it. It's essentially a statement watch and it's it's based on the regular chronographs that, that have always been there. So it's the same movement and there's nothing too special on that. And it's just the design of the piece and how it looks that's uh, different to what already exists from AP. And it's quite stunning to look at. So, who exactly is this uh, particular piece for? Well, looking at this piece, it kind of reminds you of a tropical lifestyle because it's a really large watch and it's an, it's an offshore model, so it's meant to dive. Although with a 100 meter water resistance rating, it's not really a dive watch and it's, it's not really a purpose-filled watch. Well, this, the crown itself is screwed down. However, the pushes are, are, are clicked well you can click the pushes essentially so they have no threading so that is kind of why the watch doesn't have more than 100 meters of water resistance and it's it's not really meant for the ocean anyway i think it's meant for a beach lifestyle for a tropical kind of oh, well vibe so more than anything it's it's just a really fun watch uh, i guess if you take a look at the case back now you can see that the, the movement's really nice however it's it's not that special but the, the finishing is quite great it's pretty much ap standard and it's really really nice to have a display case back most of the royal oak offshore models don't have display case backs because well the non-chronographs have a i think a depth rating of 300 meters and you could say they're, they're actual divers and they even have a helium escape valve however but the chronographs themselves are not particularly purpose-filled and they're just nice to look at and I guess nice to wear and really hefty and solid on the wrist so the watch itself is not made with any particular function apart from well being nice on your wrist I guess really nice to touch very good tactile feeling high quality solid mammoth on the wrist I guess now holding it in your hand you you have two first impressions of it one sheer 44 millimeter mass and density now large watches are typically heavier of course that would make sense but this watch is particularly dense so it's it's heavier than a typical 44 millimeter watch would be because of that ceramic case so that that material is really really dense and really nice to touch and the entire watch being mostly ceramic including the pushes as well it makes it kind of feel compact even though it's not really now that display case back is, is a nice addition at 14.4 millimeters, so that's pretty nice. Typically you find larger watches to seem less sophisticated because they don't use 
space that well. However, this watch, with, uh, with specifically in terms of the thickness at 14.4, it's actually not all that bad. It's quite, quite nice as if you take a closer look at the dial, you'd notice that the bezel kind of really sticks up a little bit, quite a bit above the dial, at least two millimeters there. And then you've got a display case back, which of course increases the overall thickness of the watch by at least two millimeters. So, well, this is a watch meant for diving. It's, it's not a dress watch, so you can't expect whatever sub nine millimeters of thickness. Anyway, you like that heft in this piece and that ceramic case really adds to it and keeps it quite compact despite being a large watch. So I wouldn't call this watch overly sophisticated in general, but it is, it is something different to your typical oversized chronograph. As you can see, I'm winding the watch and it's actually quite a really nice feeling uh, apart from the crown itself, which is quite odd to spin as it's not really circular and it's a little bit difficult to grip well and spin quickly. However, the action on the crown itself is, is very, very smooth. It's so smooth that I had to really put the watch next to my ear to make sure it was actually winding the movement. You really don't feel much resistance and you can't really hear it. I guess it's it's so densely close that it traps the sound well or the movement's just buttery smooth. Either way, really, really nice. Now, setting the time itself, I don't like that uh, lack of resistance. I usually prefer a solid heft of resistance when I'm setting the time because then you can set the time precisely without having the hand swing all over the place. And I would have liked to see more resistance in that aspect on this watch. Taking a closer look at the dial itself, that mega tapestry design, it's really nice. It's quite common in a lot of offshore models. So this smoky blue dial is, is a nice uh, addition to that entire range. They don't have something quite so punchy and it's really nice to see this. Now, do I like the blue more than the green? Uh, well, I can't say because I haven't held the green hand, but typically people do tend to prefer green these days. However, the blue, it's, it's also really, really nice. Now, depending on the lighting, you can kind of see that dial to be more smoky or more punchy blue. And that's also a nice aspect of that tapestry design. But one of the things I can't help but notice is that second subdial. If you take a closer look, you can see that it's it's a black subdial, whereas the other two subdials are rhodium finished. Now the issue I have with this is that, well, it kind of breaks the overall symmetry of the watch, but that's not the only thing. In terms of aesthetics, I really don't understand why they would want to have this monochrome subdial that doesn't really fit in with the, well, the rest of the watch. Well, I, I guess you could say that it's important to see the seconds first at a glance but that's not really your priority with this kind of piece anyway. It's, it's, it's not going underwater. And I know that it's, it's a nice bit of contrast, I guess, but personally, I would have liked to have seen it a little bit better executed. So I would have at least liked to see maybe, maybe two black subtitles or maybe none at all, but it's just kind of like a sore thumb. You really do fixate on that when you see the dial. And it's, well, I guess it's just a personal thing, but I don't know how you feel about that. Just let me know in the comment section below whether I'm nuts or we're in this together. <laughs> now you're probably wondering what exactly my wrist size is because I've been showing you so many shots of this large watch on the wrist and I've got a wrist of about seven and a quarter inches. So it, it does fit. However, it's, it's massive and it's not going to go under any cuff. Certainly not that sports jacket, but I wouldn't expect the owner of this watch to ever wear it outside of a tropical context. So that's not really an issue for this particular piece, I guess. So the watch itself doesn't come with any special clasp mechanism. It's got the regular buckle loop system. So that's not that special. Sitting at 35,000 US dollars, I would have expected some kind of deployant clasp or butterfly clasp or something, you know, it, not just a regular rubber buckle. A lot of AP offshore models also have a deployant clasp and for their, for this to be a special release, it's quite disappointing that they haven't added that. So to conclude, what is this watch really for? Well, it's, it's a statement piece. That's pretty much as far as 
most relic offshore chronographs go and it's a damn good one at that so that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching uh, let me know what you think about this piece in the comments below and see you guys next video cheers